Hey guys, thanks for coming back for video number two in the series. Um, today we're going to be looking at beef short rib. Main reason for that is, again, it's another classic barbecue cut. Um, but I've also actually got quite a lot in stock at the moment from just buying up various amounts over over lockdown. Whenever I was going to the butchers, if they had short rib, I tend to tend to buy some as well because it's just a, a cut that I absolutely love. Um, though it's one that I've only ever, well, successfully done in, in the oven and then finished on the barbecue. So cooking it in liquid and um, covered in foil, really tensing it, looking after it, trying to make sure that um, it doesn't, doesn't overcook and dry out, and then just finishing it off on the barbecue. Every time I've tried to smoke it before, I've, I've either pulled it off too early or it's been really dry. So um, I wanted to try and try and really crack that today because as I said, it's another, another classic barbecue cut, so it seemed like a good place to start. Um, so I started going through a lot of my barbecue books again, trying to find a, a recipe I like the look of, um, any consistency in there. But the one thing that struck me as slightly interesting was just the amount of variation there was when it comes to when it comes to cooking short rib. So I, I actually went back to um, my America's Best Barbecue book. Um, it is tends to be well, not not a book that I've used loads for different recipes, but it's quite good for. Just offering sort of like your view of sort of like some classic takes because it's a cookbook based on like a hundred different barbecue joints across America and um, just some of the different recipes from those. So the one on beef short ribs is from the um, County Line Barbecue in Austin, Texas. So Texas being massive on um, in, in terms of beef and really really simple. All it is is just a, a, a slab of um, beef beef um, short ribs. Um, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and that, and that's pretty much it. Um, so I thought I, I used that as inspiration and started looking for some, started looking at some other recipes. And the one that really stood out to me was um, the Aaron Franklin recipe. So he's one of the judges of um, Barbecue Pitmasters on Prime. If any of you've been watching that, if not, check it out. It's a great show. Um, and again, pretty, pretty simplistic. Um, and that, that's the recipe that I'm going to be following today. So it's just printed off, um, printed off on online. If you just, um, I just googled Aaron Franklin um, beef short rib recipe. Again, pretty simple. Just um, a salt, pepper, garlic powder rub. Um, no real, no real marinade. Using a little bit of hot sauce to help the rub bind. Um, so I quite like the sound of that. Um, and then that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Get it on the cooker, no Texas crutch, so doing nothing to try and beat the stall of the meat, just trying to sit it out. And the whole emphasis is on just letting the beef talk for itself, basically. Let the real flavour of the beef come through. So that's sort of like what I took to heart with this recipe, and I hope you enjoy the video. Right, so, really simple rub. Uh, three tablespoons of pepper, um, three tablespoons of salt and about two and a half tablespoons of garlic powder. Like I said, everything just talks about keeping it simple and letting the flavour of the beef come through. Um, one interesting thing though on the Aaron Franklin recipe was um, adding a bit of hot sauce to help the to help the rub bind to the meat. So I'm going to be giving that a bit, going to be giving that a try. So um, trusty Sri Archer, absolutely fantastic hot sauce. Always about the green top. Um, okay, so on to the meat. So, absolutely love beef short rib. So we've got the comedy, the comedy Flintstone style bones here. All of the meat's going to shrink back, which basically just turns it into uh, Mother Nature's hand or for a meat lollipop, I guess, is one way you could think about looking at it. Um, if you look at the surface area here, so all of that is bone. So that's going to be going on the grill, so that protects it from the heat slightly. When we're applying the rub, what we've got to think about here is that on the sides, there isn't actually too much meat exposed, so I am going to be taking off this fat. Now, the one thing you've got to be wary about, obviously, is if I just start at this end and start cutting it all the way down, by the time I get to this side, I'm actually taking off a large chunk of meat on the lower side of the, on the, lower side of the rib as well. So I'm just going to be trying to take off this top bit of fat to make sure that the rib can penetrate to see if we can end up with a nice bark. So I've actually just got, um, I'm not totally sure what kind of knife it is, I just know it's slightly flexible and it's extremely sharp because that's going to be really useful just for working down the contours. Going to be taking it nice and slow and steady because the last thing you want to do is to start taking meat off as well. And you can actually see here, if you start to peel away, some of it's going to come away by hand or it's going to at least get us going. So I'm just going to be making some incisions and checking on each stage because the last thing I want to be doing and like I said is taking some of the meat off and just taking off enough fat 
just so we can start to expose the meat. So you can see how we're getting there with the, um, the short rib taking the fat off now. In fact, you can actually see just the volume of fat that's come off there. Um, not too much pink in there, which is a good sign, because that means most of the meat's been left on. Um, where there's huge chunks that are running vertically from top to bottom, I'm leaving that in, otherwise it's just gonna completely compromise the whole structure of the meat. You can see I've taken off most of the fat. Again, there's a large chunk here that runs vertically down, so I'm just gonna leave that in. Last thing to think about now though, is just this silver skin membrane. Just need to get that off now. As you can see, that's gonna just start to come away if we just give it a slight tug, exposing all of the meat, and then the sauce and the rub can go onto that. Okay, so finished taking off the fat. So you can see I've exposed all of the meat now, taken off that silver skin as well. Nice little way to check, because if you can just start to almost like tease apart some of the fibers, then you know that that protective silver skin's come off, which is gonna be really useful when we're putting the, the rub and the sauce on there. So you can see we've exposed all the edges of the meat now. I've, le I've actually left the membrane on the bottom just because I found with short ribs before that they can start to sort of like um, begin to fall apart a bit. So as we're worried about eating the meat off the top rather than more in between, so to speak, I guess, I'm just going to leave the membrane on there just to hold it all together during the cook. So I've got my sriracha, give that a bit of a shake. And this is really just to help the rub bind onto the meat, but I'm just going to give this a bit of a squeeze all over. I've never done this before with the hot sauce, so I'm not totally sure what's going to happen with that, but just work that across all of the edges, just to cover the meat. And then let's go with the, go with the rub. I'm going to sprinkle it in from the top. Like I said, basically equal parts, black pepper, salt, and garlic powder. And that sauce is just gonna help it bind on really. I'm not gonna pat it in too much because it, I don't wanna penetrate the meat too much with this rub. I want it more to just help form a bit of a, a bark or a, a, a crust really as the meat cooks. Cool, so I just finished this up and then we'll be back to light the grill. Okay, so just gonna talk through the setup again because this time, um, well, I'm, I'm doing exactly the same setup as last time, but it's obviously daylight now, so you've got a better idea of what's going on. So I've got um, charcoal basket full of unlit charcoal in the bottom of the smoker. Again, those vents are gonna be at halfway. Um, lower section, got a full water pan, um, or just shy of full again, about two thirds full top section ready to go on and a full chimney starter um, on the kettle at the moment just coming up to coming up to heat so as soon as that's fully lit and burning through then that will go on top of the unlit um, and we'll start trying to get everything up to temperature. Um, I just chanced to have a quick look at the, uh, the wood and decide what we're going to be smoking with today. Um, so on the left hand side we've got some mesquite as you can see it's pretty dark wood um, really strong powerful smoke so um, really needs to only be going on big hunks of big hunks of meat. So, like we used it on the brisket um, last time out, um, wouldn't really go near chicken or fish with that because it would just overpower it. Um, hickory, um, quite nice, soft and subtle. Um, I haven't actually got enough of that left to use today. Otherwise, I'd probably be using that. Um, but that goes well with most most things. I've got some Jack Daniel whiskey barrel chips, and then the um, just some um, some of the Weber equivalents as well. Um, quite a nice little touch. You can see the chard inside of the whisk of the um, of the JD barrel there. Um, tend to really only use this on pork though, because it does impart quite a quite a sweet a sweet smoke flavour. Um, Going to be using pecan today. Again, nice um, nice soft and subtle um, smoke flavour. Um, pretty much goes with anything. Um, and the focus of today is really just trying to let the uh, the real um, well let the beef um, stand up for itself really. So just trying to give a little bit of a smoke flavour um, and let the beef do the talking. I've got a little bit of um, beech and oak back here as well. Um, oak goes really well with beef. Um, I mean when you can, if you can just cook that over oak um, oak logs, then works really well. But um, I'm just going to be these are these are more for cold smoking. But I'm just going to be making some little foil baskets to see if we can just get a bit of oak smoke in there as well. As you can see, these are these are quite small, um, much better suited to cold smoking. Smaller heat source, um, 
calling for the smaller chip size basically um if i put these straight onto the straight onto the charcoal then they'll just be incinerated so by putting them in this little foil pouch like a triple layer of foil what i'll do is bundle all that all up punch some small holes in there um and then put that foil parcel on top of the coals because what that that will then do is heat through those little chips without just completely torching them and allowing the smoke to escape through the little holes as well so that'll be going on with the with the pecan chunks shortly so this is the thing that makes um temperature control a little bit harder on the smoker is that controlling this heat and temperature by the vents does take quite a while so i've got it down to about 119 but that's taken about 45 minutes but i'm going to put it on now uh ribs ready to go and then here's my wood that i'm going to be using and you can see this the little foil parcel for the oak and all these little holes that i just poked in there um with a um kebab stick there's still there's a little bit of space underneath there because obviously you want allow to allow the smoke to circulate so it can escape through the holes but this is all going to be going on now and then we'll check back later been on for just over an hour about 118 on the grill and 67 in the beef so that's looking good um smoke's beginning to thin out a little bit so just going to put a bit more wood on muff grab some more wood some more wood Put some pass them to me and we'll put them on. So just a few more chunks on and then we'll keep that smoking over in a minute. Temperature's risen a bit actually, 121 after I put the wood on. Um, I guess some of it, because it's chunks, it might have just added to the, um, the fuel source a bit. I'm just going to take the lid off, have a look at the meat, give it a bit of a spritz. This is equal parts uh, Worcester sauce, water and apple cider vinegar. So just to stop it burning. So let's take the lid off. Okay, looking quite here, you can already see how the meat's starting to pull back from the rib slightly. A little bit of a bark starting to form. It's only been in for about an hour 40 so far, so that's all right. So let's just give it a bit of a spritz. Okay. Just over three and a half hours in. Final bit of wood going on. Put another spritz on as well. So let's get that going. Uh, the tongs. I'm just going to try and get this wood down where the hot bits of charcoal are. Just get that smoke in. Out. A couple more bits. Extra wood's been on for a couple of minutes now, and you can see how that's smoking away nicely. I'm just going to put a bit more spritz onto the beef. Um, rather than take the lid off, which would lose me a lot of heat, what I'm going to do is just poke the nozzle through the vent, and we're just going to spritz direct through there. I'm not getting quite the coverage I'd get, obviously, if I took the lid off, but it just means that I'm just protecting the air. Uh, well, just looking after the heat a little bit more in the cooker, basically. And that spritz is going to be going on there to one extent or another. Nice one. About six hours 40 in now. Um, the meat's been stuck about 77 degrees since ooh, 3.30, so about two and a half hours in. So it's basically stalled for three hours now. So just pour an old fashioned wildcard weekend and just sit back and wait now, I guess. Nine hours, 15 minutes um, into the cook time. Just hit about 93 degrees in the meat. Really interestingly on this one, I mean, for those of you that watched the last video, that's pretty much the same time as the brisket, which is four kilos. Difference with this one though was that we didn't crutch it. So um, temperature got to about 75 degrees after two and a half hours. Um, then it sat there pretty much about five and a half hours before climbing up and finishing off now at about 93. So let's take it off and have a look at what we got. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that bark. That is absolutely jet black. That looks really nice. Um, you can see where the meat's pulled away um, from the ribs, even more so on this side as well. So I'm going to take that off. Um, we'll get it resting and we'll have a bit of a closer look at it in the kitchen. Here we are in the kitchen having a bit of a closer look at it. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, meat's come really far back off those ribs as we were expecting. Absolutely jet black bark. That's going to be nice and crispy. And then you see as we push it, a little bit of a wobble there as well. 
It's looking pretty good, feeling pretty tender. In fact, as we scrape away, you can see the meat start to come away there. So we're going to rest that up for about half an hour and then we'll cut it in, um, cut it into ribs and um, see how it looks at that stage. Been resting for half an hour now. Um, that should be enough. So we're going to cut it open. Um, going to attempt to do it one handed. Um, if not, I'll, I'll cut it up, then we'll quickly come back and have a look. You can really see this absolutely vivid smoke ring all around the outside. Really happy with that. Really nice and tender meat. So that's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is, oh, if we have a look at this, you can just see how it just starts to all come away really nice and soft. Also just worth noting as well, if we just have a quick look at how clean that bone is, that's just once I've taken the meat off, just shows how soft and tender it was to slide off so nicely. Then if we just come in on this piece here and just see how we can just start to almost just peel it off as it just pulls away, such as the tenderness of the meat. Absolutely beautiful. So I was really happy with how that turned out, but I did just want to check in very quickly um, to finish off the video, because that's actually the first time I've ever beaten the stool by not using foil to lock that heat in. Um, so here's a, a chart I just um, drew up of the different temperatures that we went, went through. So first, first couple of hours raced up to 70 degrees Celsius, third hour up to about 77, dropped down to 75 so actually lost a little bit of heat as all of that um, as the meat's like working hard to, to combat the heat of the fire so some of the evaporation going through pulling the, the heat of the meat down a couple of degrees slightly and um, then finally climbed up to um, 78 degrees after eight hours and then climbed up the final 13 degrees celsius for the final hour so really really long stall period i mean almost close to sort of like five and a half six hours in the end but well worth it really worth hanging in there and i was um, repaid handsomely for my patience in the end hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to like share and subscribe see you soon